afforded her opportunities to share platforms with great speakers across the globe. Her reach extends be far beyond that of local dimensions. She has an international presence and has provided keynote addresses for prisons, youth camps, women's shelters, mentoring, and the school system in Belize. Dr. Lee, Dr. Darlene is employed as the Senior Director of Ministerial Development for New Life Covenant Church, where Pastor John Hanna is a senior pastor. She earned a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration, a Master's in Business Management, both from DePaul University, and a PhD in Leadership and Organizational Management from Capella University. Dr. Darlene has been happily married to Eugene Nichols, Jr. since 1996. Together they have two sons, Eugene Nichols III, affectionately known as E.J. and Austin. I read that because it's honorable to do so. But I want you to know that this woman of God, beyond what's written on this paper, is a true servant of God. I love her personality, I love the life and the creativity that she brings through her communication, but her dedication to the servant, to the angel of their house, Pastor Hannah, she's right there. I was sharing with her Metropolitan uh, because, you know, New Covenant is in the process of building a new sanctuary, and they have gone through the same things that we have been through, and right now they're going through multiple scenarios of delays. And I pulled out in the office this evening the manuals of our change orders that's so high. Just to remind her that, to share with Pastor, that with God. Jesus said, man said that this is impossible. And I know how it feels Dr. Darlene, when folk drive past the lot and say, oh, I thought they were going to. What's taking them so long? But it shall come to pass. I've been praying with Pastor and the faith community and their leadership. They do something very creative on Facebook. They have Facebook Live, and you know, Pastor Hannah is one of my favorite, you all know that. And what they do in their meetings, sometimes they let us go into their meetings live on Facebook. And boy, it brings me happiness and laughter when I see them exchange. But Metropolitan, I want us, this is our first time here, so she can go back and tell Pastor. Give her the warm welcome that this little family offers as we receive none other than Dr. Darlene Nichols. There is a question, Dr. Darlene, and that question is? Hallelujah. Now come on and clap your hands for the Lord Jesus, the one that woke you up this morning, the one that started you on your way. Come on, come on, come on. Applaud him for his greatness. Applaud him for his kindness. Now say something good about him. Give him a hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We worship you. And we adore you. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, here we are to tell you that we thank you. God, we love you. We adore you. We magnify you. We lift you. We praise you. You're good. You're holy. You're great. You never lose. You never lie. You sit high. You look low. You see us and you know. You're in control, and we say yes to your will. We say yes to your way, God. Do what you want to do today. Hallelujah. It's revival time. Revive us, God. Refresh us, God. Renew us. Restore us, God. Have your way in this house like never before. Touch us, and we'll be touched. Heal us, and we'll be healed. Deliver, and we'll be delivered. We thank you now, God, for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. Thank you for working it out. Thank you for stepping in. Thank you for getting in our business. Oh, God, we love you. 
Have your way, God. Anoint us now. Bless this, your daughter. Anoint these lips of clay. We pray for precision of speech and clarity of thought. We pray right now that you would have your way in this house like never before. And Satan, we've come to serve notice on you that every contract is canceled. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Come against your plan, your plot, your scheme, and your desire. You will not win. Hallelujah. Because God has already given us the victory. So we give you name, praise God. We give your name glory and we give your name honor. And it is in the matchless name of Jesus that we do say, amen. Hallelujah. One more good time, just clap those hands. Give God the best praise that you can. You may have your seats in the presence of our holy king. I'm so honored to be here. This is an amazing, amazing house. You all do such excellent, I mean, just things in excellence. You all to clap for yourselves. I'm telling you, I am just honored to be here. I give all praise and honor to God who's the head of my life. And it is in him I live, I move, and I have my being. I thank God for my own husband who was not feeling well today. And he texted me to let me know that he's praying for me. But he was going to drink his tea and get on in the bed. So we'll just pray on that, all right? <laughs> I thank God for my sister in love that came out with me today. Amen, Miss LaShonda. Amen, thank God for her. Good to see you, Abronia. I saw you there, you are, Abronia is here. Amen, and twin is over there. Good to see you, baby. I love you so very much. Amen, and this, this awesome man of God, this musician, this pastor, this friend, he and I go way, way back to knowing him over 30 some odd years, Pastor Max Frank. He is family, and we thank God for him. And to the angel of this house, the angel of this house, the one, the only, the doctor, the reverend, the elder, the one that prays for you when you sleep, he praying for you. The one that goes to God on your behalf, let him know he's loved. Let him know how much he's appreciated. Clap your hands and give God praise for the one, the only, the doctor, the pastor, Leon Perry III. God bless you. Thank you for having me. I'm so elated to be here and I'm honored and I believe that there's a word in the house from the Lord today. God's going to do something amazing. Amen. I know you had an amazing time yesterday. Miss Mary was telling me that you had an awesome time yesterday and I'm just sandwiched in between two amazing men of God. And so it's a privilege and a pleasure to stand before you and give to you what the Lord has given to me. And so I'm not going to belabor the time. There's a song in my spirit that I just feel and I just hear. Now, y'all had a sermonic solo. Oh, I'm the sermonic solo. It's okay. <laughs> I got to do it all. It's all right. I love it. In God, there is no failure. He will do whatever you ask him to. Mm -hmm. Just have faith. And believe in many blessings you will receive. Cause it ain't no failure. Can I say that? <laughs> no failure in God. Oh, 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 oh in God. There is him to just have faith and believe many blessings you will receive for there is no 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 failure no failure oh in God
clap those hands and bless him. He's a good God, even on a bad day. And we love him. Mark, the ninth chapter. I want to read two verses. I feel it already, y'all. I don't have much time, but I kind of keep going. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Mark, the ninth chapter. I want to read two verses into your hearing, verse number 23 and verse number 24. Your Screenworks team is off the chain, by the way. Yes, indeedy. Clap your hands for the Screenworks. Amen. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway, the father of the child cried out, said with tears, Lord, I believe. Yes. Help thou mine unbelief. I want to talk to you today about the topic only believe. Mm -hmm. Only believe. So as we delve into this particular passage, as we talk about it, I want to talk to you about believing know what it means to believe. To believe is to accept something as the truth. It is to have trust. It is to have faith in a particular thing. Now, when you look at faith, faith is a mixture of belief, trust, and knowledge. Faith, trust, and believing are all derived from the same Greek root, pistio. Faith in the Greek is pistis or pistai. Trust is impistocene, while belief is pistival. So we must understand that faith, trust, belief all go together. When you believe God, it starts in the mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So it starts in the mind. Once you believe, then that belief is then carried out by our actions. When we believe a thing, we're easy to move, arise, or take action on what we believe. So in order to please God, we must believe him. We must have faith in him. Hebrews 11, 6 says, but without faith, what? It is impossible to please him. So in order to please him, you've got to believe him and you've got to have faith in him. So the belief that we have in God causes us to trust him. Songwriter said, trust and obey. And there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. We've got to trust him even when we cannot trace him. We don't know what he's doing. We don't know how he's doing. We still got to trust him because he knows what he's doing. Somebody said it like this. He's not trying to be God. He is God. <laughs> He's the first, the last, the alpha, the omega, and everything in between. He is the God of all flesh. He sits high. He looks low. He sees and he knows. He's Jeho Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Sikhanu. He is Jehovah Shama. He is El Elyon. He is always with us. He's the mighty God. He's the strong, powerful God. There is no failure in him. He can do whatever he won't when he won't because he's sovereign. He's good like that. He's God like that. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we trust. That's the God that we live for. There is nothing impossible for him. The Bible lets us know that for he that come to God must first believe that he is. That he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you seek him, you'll find him. So as children of God, as children of the Most High, we must believe that whatever God says is true. We must believe that he can do it. We must believe that he can do anything. He can do the impossible things in our lives. He can do anything but fail. So we must believe and we must have faith in him. And so as I begin to look at this passage of scripture, will you allow me to use this particular passage of scripture as the backdrop to increase your faith in God? I want to talk about this passage of scripture and there are three things that I want to rehearse into your hearing through this story. 
As it relates to building your faith, I want to talk about the fact that we do sometimes, yes, we believe God, but sometimes in our human faculties, we struggle with believing that he can do it for us. We're just like this man. We'll get into the topic, but we struggle with believing that God is going to work it out on our behalf. So I've come to increase your faith. I've come to build you up through the word of God to talk about how important it is that you believe that God can do anything. So as we look at the three things, I want to use this backdrop as a scripture. And I want to talk about the first, what he saw. The second thing I'm going to talk about is what he sees. And the third thing I want to talk about is what God says. So let's look at this passage of scripture. We find here that Jesus, Peter, James, and John are coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration and they are met by a great multitude. One of the followers in that multitude begins to strike up a conversation with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he talks to him, he says, I took my son to your disciples and they could not bring freedom to his situation. Begins to talk to him about his problem, about his issue. I have a son with a deaf and dumb spirit. Now there's something interesting to understand that this spirit has taken complete control over my son. He says he foams at the mouth and he gnashes his teeth and he is pining away. In other words, he's wasting away. I'm looking at this thing and I'm struggling because this thing has gotten completely out of control. In other words, he's saying, I need help. My case is all messed up. I don't know what else to do. I took them to the people who are close with you and nothing happened. Jesus says, oh, you faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? When are you going to understand that you've got the power on the inside of you to speak those things that be not as though they were? You got to activate the power that's on the inside of you. He says, bring them to me. Jesus gets the boy and the Bible lets us know immediately the spirit began to tear him and he falls down to the ground and he foams at the mouth and Jesus asks the question to his father, how long has he been like this? How long, how long has he been struggling with this issue? How long has his spirit taken over him? How long has the demonic forces been running up the front of you and down the back? How long? Have you been in a state of turmoil? How long have you been going through depression? How long have you been weary? How long have you been lonely? How long have you felt like there's no hope? How long has it been like this? Father requires, he replies, it's been this way since he was a child. So I can imagine, he says, now this is what I see, point number one. What I see is my son going into the fire and then in the water, burning himself and then cooling himself, gnashing his teeth and wasting away. He's in a state of stupor. He's mentally confused. Demonic force has got him. He's just the mess. This thing is out of control. I'm in a major crisis. Jesus lets him know if you can believe, it's possible. If you can believe, it's possible. Here, 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 if you can just believe that I can do it, then I can and I will do it for you. The man cries out, Lord, I do believe, but there's a part of me that's still struggling with this thing. Lord, I do believe, but help thou mine unbelief because of number one, what he sees. What does he see? What does he see? 
see. What, what he sees is a, a young man. The Bible lets us know that he says he was this way since he was a child. He did not say that he was born this way. He did not say that he came into the world this way. He did not say he was born with this infirmity. But dad says he's been this way since he was a child. So what I saw was a healthy boy. What I saw was a good thing going on. What I saw was my seed. What I saw was my son. But somewhere in the middle, a spirit got a hold to him. Somewhere in the middle, things shifted. Somewhere in the middle, things changed. Somewhere in the middle, things went awry. Somewhere in the middle, something happened. I saw what was good and something happened and twisted that thing around. And I'm having difficulty believing because of what I saw. I has been this way a long time. My boy has been possessed with this demonic force for a long time. I've been struggling with this thing for a long time. I've been going through for a long time. It seemed like it was okay and something happened in the middle to shift things and it's not getting back right. Am I talking to anybody in here? It seemed like everything was going well. I had a good job. I was making money. Money was rolling in. Everything was going good. But what I saw was good and all of a sudden something shifted. I had some trouble on the job. I had some trouble in my finances. The enemy took a hold of my money. My change was strange. I couldn't make ends meet. Something happened and I've been this way for a long time. I saw it good but now I'm looking at the face. I'm looking at the face of adversity. Lord I believe help thou mine unbelief. Something happened midway. Anybody ever been like that where something happened midway. Everything was alright. I was doing good but all of a sudden I, I begin to feel depressed. I, I started to feel lonely. I got hit with the pressures of life. I saw things turn. I, I saw things shift and I begin to settle in and make myself believe it was always going to be this way. Oh but can I tell you that when Jesus steps on the scene he comes to deliver. He comes to heal. He comes to set free. He comes to bring you out. Oh the marriage was good but now I'm in the divorce court. What happened? Don't you worry. God still got you even in this. Don't you worry. Body was feeling good now. I got a bad report from the doctor. I saw a shift. Oh, but don't worry, because God is still in the middle of the shift. He's working it out. He's turning it around. He's going to work it for your good. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And so what I saw is that I saw my boy struggling. I saw him going through and I don't know what's going on right now. Number one, that's what he saw. Can I tell you number two, what he sees now? I'm in the midst of this issue. I see that Jesus is on the scene. I'm excited about it. I see his disciples, the ones that are closest with him, the ones that have been walking with him, and I take my boy to him. I take my boy to them. I get excited because I know these are the ones that walk with Jesus. Jesus. These are the ones that eat with Jesus. These are the ones that talk with Jesus. These are the ones that see him. They sleep with him. They know what's going on. They wake up to him. They've been walking with him. They see him doing miracles, signs, and wonders. They see him healing. They see him delivering. They're walking. Come on, boy, because I get excited about